Okay, so today we are going to be reading Act 1, Scene 2 of The Taming of the Shrew. Now, this is, remember we had started this play, it's a comedy, that means it ends well, it ends with a wedding, it, it uh, is pretty funny, it has a lot of funny parts. It started with an induction with Chris Sly, the drunk guy that they're pretending is a lord. And we have this big theme, this big idea of appearances versus reality and the difference between the two because how things appear is not actually often real, okay? And we have that idea in our, cur in our current world where we have social media and things like that, for sure. There are a lot of things that are out there that we see. It's not really realistic, right? Okay, so we had act one and we, we met Lucentio, who's this young guy who's in Padua, he and his, his servant Tranio. And man, they're just looking to have a nice rest and relaxation. Well, he sees this beautiful girl. There are two daughters of Baptista. One is kind of, you know, angry a lot. She's scary to a lot of the men. The younger daughter is named Bianca. And she is beautiful. And every single guy out there thinks that she would be the perfect wife. So Lucentio's instantaneously smitten. He loves her so much. Probably not love. And so he wants Tranio to help him get her. The other two suitors for Bianca have agreed, Grimio and Hortensio have agreed to work together and try to find Catherine a husband. So Lucentio decides, well, he and Tranio come up with this idea where Lucentio is going to pretend he's going to dress up like a, like a schoolmaster, like a tutor, so that he can get into Bianca or to get into Baptista's household to talk to Bianca. While he's doing that, Tranio's going to dress up like him, and he's going to uh, pursue Bianca with Baptista. He's going to go to B Baptista and be like, I would like to marry your daughter. And so that's what's going to happen. That's where we left them at the end of scene one in act one. So now we're starting scene two in act one. Now we have changed to a different set of characters. We are now with Petruchio. Now, Petruchio is the male lead of this play. Petruchio is the main character, the main guy character, okay? Um, and actually, we've already met our main girl character. Catherine is the main girl. Catherine, the one who's angry all the time, she's the shrew. So, Petruchio is the main male character. We're just meeting him. We're meeting him and his servant, Grumio. Now, remember, Grumio with an E, that's the old guy, the pantaloon, the guy who's like 60, who wants to marry the young 16-year-old. Gross. And then now we have Grumio. Grumio is Petruchio's servant, okay? And they also have an interesting relationship as far as like master and servant. It's not quite, like a lot of times when we think of a master and servant, we think of like servants maybe being like afraid of their master and things like that. Shakespearean servants usually are not. Shakespearean ser servants are usually treated reasonably well and they're pretty funny and we get a lot of humor from those servants, okay? So those are the people we're following now. So let's see what they do. Sweet tunes. Oh my gosh, it just goes on and on, guys. What a treat. Outstanding. Hmm. Petruchio. Verona, for a while I take my leave to see my friends in Padua, but of all my best beloved and approved friend, Hortensio, and I trow this is his house. Here, yeah, Sarah Grumio. Knock, I say. Knock, sir? Who should I knock? Is there any man who's reviews, you worship? Villain, I say, knock me here soundly. Knock your ear, sir? Why, sir? What am I, sir, that I should knock your ear, sir? Villain, I say, knock me at this gate and rat me well or I'll knock your name's pate. My master is going to quarrelsome. I should knock you first and then I know after who comes by the worst. Will it not be I... faith, sir? Oh. And you'll not knock. I'll ring it. I'll try how you can so far and sing it. Thou, master, thou, the master is mad. Now knock when I bid you, <laughs> sir, villain. <laughs> 
Okay, okay, so we get a lot of like insight into Petruchio and his servant Grumio. First of all, <laughs> they're funny, okay? If you didn't really catch like what all they were saying, like they're they're pretty funny. So Hortensio says, knock you here. He's like, I get the feeling like, or um, Petruchio, I get the feeling Petruchio maybe doesn't, <laughs> maybe he doesn't have Grumio do a lot, or maybe just Grumio knows he can get away with stuff, maybe. Because he tells him to knock on Hortensio's door. He, but he says it strangely. He says, he says, um, knock upon uh, the gate, okay? Um, he says, knock, I say. And then Grumio's like, knock, and he takes it as like, punch, okay? So he's like, who should I knock? Is there any man here who's upsetting you? And, uh, and Petruchio's like, villain, I said knock here soundly. You know, Grumio's like, knock here, sir. Why? He says, knock me here soundly. He's like, knock you, sir, here soundly. Why? Why, why should I knock you here? Why should I hit my master? Oh, no. And <laughs> Petruchio says, villain, I say, knock me at this gate. Wrap me well or I'll knock your knave's pate. And Grumio's like, man, you're picking a fight. I, I should knock you first, and then I know after who comes by the worst. You know, and Petruchio's getting, like, huffier and huffier as this go is going on. Have you ever had that moment with, like, a good friend where they say something and it's maybe funny or it's maybe not worded exactly correctly, and you kind of tease them over it? You kind of mess with them a little bit because it's a hoot, and they're getting, like, grumpier and grumpier with you, and you just think you're hilarious like, I feel like this happens all the time in my world, and nobody appreciates how funny I am, and I feel like Grumio is feeling that so much right now. Anyway, poor Grumio. And so finally, <laughs> you know, Petruchio's like threatening his servant Grumio. Right then, Hortensio opens the door, maybe thankfully for Grumio's sake. Oh, what's the matter? My, my, my old friend Grumio, I'm not my good uh, friend Petruchio. How do you want the food? Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention, Petruchio is old friends with Hortensio. So that's kind of cool. So Petruchio has come, we don't know right now why he's in Padua. We know he came from Verona. And so he's in Padua for some reason. He's going to his friend Hortensio's house. Hortensio is the suitor who's probably like in his late 20s, maybe 30. And he's the one who wants to marry Bianca. So remember, he is trying to find a husband for Catherine. Hmm. Signor Hortensio, come here to part the fray. Come to il cuore, ben trovato, may I say. Alla nostra casa benvenuto, molto honorato, signor mio Petruccio. Advise, good man, advise, we will compound this quarrel. Oh, no, it is no matter, sir, what he letters in Latin. If this be not a lawful cause for me to leave his service, look you, sir. He bid me knock him and wrap him soundly, sir. Well... Was it fit for a servant to use his master so? Being perhaps for aught I see, two and thirty a peep out. And would to God I had well knocked it first, and had not Grumio come by the worst. A senseless oh. villain. Oh. Good Hortensio, I bade the rascal knock upon your gate, and could not get it for my heart to do it. Knock <laughs> at the gate? Oh, heavens. Oh. Spake you not these words. Plain sitter, knock me here. Wrap me here, knock me well, and knock me soundly, and come you now, we knocking at the gate. Sir, be gone, or talk not, I advise you. But touch your patience, I, I am Grumio's pledge. Why, this a heavy chance twixt him and you, your ancient, trusty, pl pl pleasant servant, Grumio. And, and uh, tell me now, sweet friend, what happy gale blows you to Padua here from old Verona? Okay, so, so Grumio is acting a little obtuse to the very end, so... <laughs> Uh, Petruchio says, I told you to knock the gate, you know, and he's like, oh, oh, you said, you, you didn't say knock the gate, you said knock me here, so I thought you wanted me to knock you, not the gate, hmm. he's just playing dumb, he knows what happened, but he thinks it's hilarious, again, funny, and then Hortensio is like, so why are you here, like, what's up, what's going on, why are you here, Petruchio, what's going on with you? Such wind as scatters young men through the world to seek their fortunes farther than at home, where small experience grows. But in a few, Signor Hortensia, thus it stands with me. Antonio, my father, is deceased. Oh, okay. And I have thrust myself into this maze, happily to wive and thrive as best I may. 
crowns in my purse I have, and goods at home, and so I'm come abroad to see the world. Petruchio, shall I then come roundly to thee, and wish thee to a shrewd, ill-favoured wife? I'd thank me but a little for my counsel, and yet I'll promise thee she shall be rich, and very r rich. But thou art too much, my friend, and I'll not wish thee to her. Signor Hortensio, twixt such friends as we, few words suffice, and therefore, if thou know one rich enough to be Petruchio's wife, as wealth is burden of my wooing dance, be she as foul as was Florentius' love, as old as Sybil, and as cursed and shrewd as Socrates' Xanthippe, or of worse, she moves me not, or not removes at least affection's edge in me, were she as rough as are the swelling Adriatic seas. I come to wave it wealthily in Padua, if wealthily, then happily in Padua. No. Okay, so let's pause for a second. So, Petruchio tells Hortensio, I come to seek my fortune. Anto Antonio, my father, has died. Okay? So, Petruchio has an estate that he has inherited from his father. And he says, And I have thrust myself into this maze happily to wive and thrive as best I may. So, he's come to Padua to find a wife. I mean, it's, it makes sense. Like, you know, you need a wife whenever you, I mean, I guess, uh, whenever you own an estate and, you know, you have to have heirs. The, you know, the, the planet must be peopled or something of that nature. So, I guess, but we actually find out there's a little bit more of a reason that he is trying to find a wife. Petruchio says... Mm, you're coming to get a wife, and I, I think I can actually help you, but listen, what if you ended up married to a shrewd, ill-favored wife? Like, I mean, even if she's rich, like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, probably you wouldn't want that, would you? Who's he thinking of? Catherine. Petruchio says, listen, Hortensio, we are friends, so I'm going to be honest with you. If she's got money, I've got time. I'm ready. He says, she could be as foul as Florentius's love. Um, these would all be people from like mythology that the audience would recognize. As old as Sybil, as cursed and shrewd as Socrates Xanthippe, hmm. or worse, she moves me not, or not removes, at least affection's edge in me. So, worse, I don't even like her. I don't even want to hang out with her, be around her at all. Duh. He says, if she were as rough as the whole Adriatic Sea, if she's wealthy, then I'm happy. Hey, look here, sir. He tells you flatly what his mind is. Why, well, give him gold enough and marry him to a puppet or an aglet baby or an old shot with never a tooth in her head. Though she have as many diseases as two and fifty horses. Why, nothing comes amiss, our money comes with all. But, Churchill, church, since we are stepped of the thus far in, I will continue that I broached in jest. I can, Petruchio, help thee to a wife. With wealth enough and young and beauteous, brought up as best becomes a gentlewoman. Her only for fault, and that is for faults enough, is that she is intolerable, cursed, and shrewd and froward. So beyond all measure, that were my state far worse than it is, I would not wed her for a mine of gold. Okay, so let's pause. So Grumio piped in there after. Petruchio said he'll marry anything. He doesn't care. She got money. He's got time. Grumio pipes up and he's like, yeah, he just needs the money. If she's got enough money, he doesn't care. You can marry him to a puppet. You can marry him to a, you know, an aglet baby. You know, a, an old woman that doesn't even have her teeth in her head still. You can marry her to that. Doesn't matter. If she has money, she can have diseases. A bunch of diseases. Ooh, that is not good. And, uh, yeah, he'll definitely marry her. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. And Hortensio's like, ooh, well, that's rough. Um, but I may actually have somebody that I think 
might do the trick. But she is intolerably cursed. She's kind of terrible. You're probably going to hate her. Let's hear what Petruchio says. Petruchio, peace, thou knowest not gold's effect. Hmm. Tell me her father's name and tis enough. For I will board her, though she chide as loud as thunder when the clouds in autumn crack. Her father is Baptista Minola, an affable and courteous gentleman. Uh, her name is Katharina Minola, renowned in Padua for her sc scolding tongue. I know her father, though I know not her, and he knew my deceased father well. I will not sleep, Hortensio, till I see her. And therefore, let me be thus bold with you to give you over at this first encounter, unless you will accompany me thither. I pray you, sir, let him go while the humour lasts. Aye, my word, and she knew him as well as I do. She would think scolding would do little good upon him. <laughs> she may perhaps call him half a score names or so. Why, that's nothing. And he begin once, he'll rail in his rope tricks. I tell you what, sir, and she's standing but a little. He will throw a figure in her face and so disfigure her with it that she shall have no more eyes to see with all of the cat. Yeah, no, him not, sir. Okay, so, so Hortensio tells him that, uh, you know, who the dad is, Baptista Manola. And Petruca is like, oh, yeah, I, I know of him. My dad knew him. So, yeah, that's no problem. And absolutely, you are going to have to introduce me because this absolutely sounds like this is the answer. And Grumio says, oh yeah, for sure. Even if she like scolds him, no problem. If she calls him all sorts of names, no worries. Heck, you know, I mean, he's not even gonna, it's not even gonna phase him if she starts name calling. No big deal. Um, he says, man, you know, just throw something at her. It's okay. Like he's, he'll give as good as he gets. Grumio is not worried about his master. Tariff. Petruccio, I must go with thee, for in Baptista's keep my treasure is. He hath the jewel of my life in hold, his youngest daughter, beautiful Bianca, and her withholds from me and other more, suitors to her and, and rivals in my love. Supposing it a thing impossible for those defects I have before rehearsed, that ever Katharina will be wooed. Therefore this order hath Baptista Tain, that none shall have access unto Bianca till C Catherine the C Cursed have got a husband. Catherine the Cursed? Oh, a title for the maid of all titles the worst. Now shall my friend Petruccio do me grace and offer me disguised in Sir Sober robes to old Baptista as a schoolmaster, well seen in music, to instruct Bianca. That so I may by this device at last have the leave and the leisure to make love to her, and unsuspected caught her by herself. Oh, here's no knavery. See to beguile the old folks, how the young folks lay their heads together. Okay. So let's pause for just a second, and I think. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, but I just want to explain those last couple of things that they said. So um, Hortensio says, well, I'll go with you because I want to keep an eye on, he says, my treasure. Like Baptista's house is where my treasure is. Uh, the younger daughter, Bianca, that's the one I'm interested in, is what Hortensio is saying. And so he wants to be there, be around. Um, by the way, he calls Bianca a treasure. Now, these guys are talking a lot about how these women look. Bianca is Hortensio's treasure. Is she? Is she really? Or is this just objectification of some kind? Okay. Again, you know, we've talked about this occasionally. You have to see people as people. People are not objects to have. Catherine was annoyed in the first scene because her father and the men around were treating her like a piece of furniture, kind of, to be bought or sold in some way. Women are not furniture, they're not chattel, they're not something that belongs to you, they're not treasure, they're human beings, and they should be treated as such. So, oopsie, Hortensio, it's a little bit of a problem there. Um, Grumio loves the name <laughs> of Catherine, the little nickname for Catherine, Catherine the Curse, woo, that's gonna be fun. And Hortensio says, all right, you know, yeah, I'll go with you, but here's what I want you to do, Petruchio. He says, I'm going to dress up 
in the robes of a schoolmaster and you're going to introduce me to them as a schoolmaster. Okay, so, so Hortensio also is planning to dress up and to get on the inside of Baptista's house so that he can get close to Bianca. Who else is doing that? Lucentio. A lot of people dressing up like other things. A lot of people acting like somebody they're not. Uh-oh. Okay, so we're gonna pause there and I'm just gonna start another video. Um, we're still in the same scene, act one, scene two, okay? Okay, bye.